You've lost about 80% of the bones in your jaw, but in order to show you why, I need to go back in time to the earliest ancestors of mammals, the synapsids. Synapsids are also known as proto-mammals or stem mammals, and one of the most important developments in synapsids is this hole in the skull called temporal fenestra. You can see it's right behind the eye socket, and one of the most important things that we think it did was connect to jaw muscles, giving a more efficient bite for synapsids. This this is the skull of Morganocodon, which is an extinct stem mammal. You can see here, there's quite a few different bones, including in the jaw here. Whereas modern humans only have this larger jaw bone, you can see that stem mammals had six bones in the jaws. So what happened to them? Whereas previous organisms all had the same kind of teeth, synapsids developed different types of teeth, and along with that, and the jaw muscles, a new type of chewing. You see, previous animals had only ever chewed up and down like this. But with the development of different types of teeth, synapsids evolved a grinding motion side to side like that. Unfortunately, that has a tendency to dislocate your jaw if you only have a single articulation point. So one of the next developments in the synapsid line was the development of a double articulated jaw. This is called the temporomandibular joint, or the TMJ, which you might have heard of from TMJ disorders. You can see one of the earlier examples of this in Cynoconodon, a mammalia form from the Jurassic. Mammalia form is just another term for proto-mammals or stem mammals. And at that point in mammal development, there was something called Meckel's cartilage, which supports and helps develop the bones in the jaw. But by the time we get to Cretaceous mammals, like Yanoconodon here, Meckel's cartilage has ossified, meaning it's turned into another bone. You can see at the same time, the other bones in the jaw are starting to shrink and move back. And that's a little bit of a hint as to where they ended up. Let's go to a mammal that's still alive. This is Monodelphus, the short-tailed opossum. You can see here in its embryo stage, it still has Meckel's cartilage, and it still has the same bones as the Cretaceous mammal we looked at before. But by the time it becomes an adult, all of those bones and cartilage are gone. Well, what's happened is that that embryonic Meckel's cartilage has dissolved, and you can see here in the Monodelphus adult, there is a gap between bones here. And where did they go? Well, all we need to do is look a little bit further back and take a look at the ear. You see, reptiles and ancient proto-mammals had one bone in the ear connected from the eardrum to what's called the oval window of the cochlea, which leads into the inner ear, where the ear fluid is. And you can see that reptiles still have multiple bones in the jaw. But when we take a look at this mammal skull, there's only one bone in the jaw, but suddenly the middle ear has three bones. Here's a comparison with the homologous structures color-coded. Homologous means they develop from the same structure. So you see here we have that single bone in the ear in green for reptiles, and these bones here in blue and orange still parts of the jaw. But we can see in mammals those bones have moved back, and they are in fact part of the middle ear. And this is only made possible by that cartilage dissolving that we talked about earlier. And this is actually a great thing, because here's how the ear works. Let's start with reptiles again. Sound hits the eardrum, which vibrates, and the stapes here goes into the inner ear fluid, making vibrations which are translated by the brain. And that works decently well for a small number of frequencies. But in the mammal ear, we have not just the stapes, but also the incus and the malleus. And these are often called the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. Here's a picture of what they look like real size. As you can see, they're quite small and wouldn't really help in our jaw bones anyway at this point. But essentially what happens is once again the eardrum vibrates, and then the malleus acts as a lever. That triggers the anvil and the stirrup, which are fused so they act as one bone, into the inner ear like it's a piston back and forth, which makes us a lot better at hearing higher frequencies than something like a reptile is. And that solves the mystery of the missing jaw bones. They've moved back into your ear, gotten separated over evolutionary time, and now they let us hear higher pitched things. Hopefully that's as cool to you as it is to me. Thank you for watching, and thank you to Hyde for being my first channel member. If you want to help support the channel, go into the description. You can either support on YouTube or on Patreon. Really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.